right? Finally, well, not, not quite finally, but the end of this quiz material review. Born Oppenheimer approximation. Uh, the, yes, the, if you're wondering, the Oppenheimer from the bomb. So he's the bomb guy. It's an approximation that says that the nuclei of uh, some molecule, atom, are motionless. So these, these atoms, you can imagine, atom, atom, no, make that the nuclei, the nuclei, say that they're fixed and that they don't move around a lot. Uh, at all, for the purpose of this. Approximate that the nuclei are, are motionless. Then you solve for the electron wave function at fixed nuclei distances. So, let's take into account everything. This, this wave function takes into account the distance, the electron, and the distance of the nuclei. That's what this is a function of. So you have your standard wave function combination, ground state, and your vibrational interaction, your rotational energy or center of mass from a particle in the box. An example in atomic units is uh, for H3+. plus. Oh, why not? Here you have your kinetic energy terms, Laplacian, and then you have two electrons and Three nuclei to play with. We'll call them A, B, C. I like simple terms. You need to take into account every electron nuclei interaction, which means if there are two of these, three of these, you'll have six. So six terms alone will be between electron and nuclei interactions. So you have your nuclear charge, which in this case is one, so one squared over your interactions between R1 and electron 1 and nuclei, nucleus A. So you have 3 for electron 1, 3 for electron 2, and then you have positive 1 over R12. Those are your two electrons interacting. This is the same as R21, so that's why you have that. And then you have your interactions of your nuclei, so between AB, AC, and BC. So a total of, you know, what, 6, 7, 10, 12 terms about. Now, this includes everything except for nuclear kinetic energy. Why is that, you ask? Well, I'm glad you ask. Imagine you have a... a uh, an animal of the uh, bovine persuasion and uh, I don't even know how to draw a cow so I don't even know cows yeah, they can be spotted happy cow alright this cow is your nucleus This is your electron. Let's call them electron flies. Your electron flies will move around. <laughs> Get it? Move. Oh my god, I'm hilarious. They will move around your cow very quickly relative to how fast this cow moves. So essentially, this nucleus. is motionless compared to these very quickly moving flies very quickly moving around so if you can imagine cow having some leaves or some grass in a pasture it doesn't move a lot 
or very slowly, so you can almost ignore that. That's what makes this makes this Born-Oppenheimer approximation work, assuming that in this Hamiltonian you do not need the nuclear kinetic energy. The effective potential for your nucleus goes like this. You have your energy in terms of RAB plus nuclear charge squared over RAB. Your Hamiltonian at this R becomes this is for a, a new example. This is no longer for H3 plus, this is a new example. Hamiltonian is now uh, this is this is just for I think this is for uh, H2 plus right because there's just one electron but two nuclei yeah that makes sense okay so this is for H2 plus monoplasian two electron nuclear interactions one nuclear nuclear interaction so you normalize this using your wave function squared over the integral of these three parameters, so d tau, and you get c, you get some sort of normalization function. This is just a mathematical example, this is nothing conceptual, this is just showing you this is how you can solve for, for one of these. You might be asking, what is the best R to have, right? Well, the best distance to have is where the electrons are shared and shared the most. So, so the lowest possible energy. So, so what you want to do is find the expectation value of the energy. So, what goes in here? A couple, of, a few terms. The first term is the lowest possible energy for one electron in the one s state. Second term is your repulsive energy. So this is a plus 1 over R, is your repulsive energy. And then you have this fun integral. It basically uses the Hamiltonian term operator, negative 1 over R1A. So this is where this comes from, acting on your psi of B. This is all over your normalization constant. This total gives you your bond energy. So your three terms, you're finding this expectation energy is your lowest possible energy that is given for one electron, your repulsive energy, and bond energy. Now visually and conceptually, you can describe this using a Morse potential diagram. Where your y axis is your energy, x axis is radius, some distance. Your Morse potential curves away from the ideal harmonic oscillator. Both do, however, have their min at the equilibrium bond length. This is where it's the happiest. This is where you have your quote unquote best R. That's where elections are shared. Your Morse potential obviously deviates, so you can see that from the dotted ideal harmonic oscillator. Morse potential actually deviates and then goes away from this perfect bell curve to, or perfect uh, parabola to uh, some deviation. Within this electronic state, you have vibrational levels, 0, 1, and 2. If you remember, these are, if you remember from the harmonic oscillator properties, you have something that looks like this. Then you have two main energies here. From absolutely zero energy, to the dissociation energy, you have the well depth given by d sub e. 
but we don't start at the very bottom. We don't have zero energy. We have some sort of energy at V equals zero. So from that level, that vibration level, to your dissociation energy gives you D sub O, and this is your, your actual dissociation energy. This is what you can find experimentally. And this is, of course, for a diatomic. So, to recap, to recap Born-Oppenheimer, we can ignore nuclear kinetic energy. Uh, my cow. And Morse potential solving for where's your best R and solving for these two energies, dissociation and well depth.